So I just wanted to make a quick video looking at this t-shirt. Um, and uh, I get it. People wear it and they think it's funny and stuff. Um, but to me, it implies trust us. You know, I always say for people to check things out on their own. The good Lord gave each of us discernment. Use it. Um, don't trust anything. Investigate. I want to people. I want people to watch my videos and go out and investigate things for themselves, not just you know, hey, I checked, you know, or we checked. Um, yeah. So I had this whole script mapped out that I was going to go through. Instead, I think I'm just going to play a few videos um, and let you decide for yourself. Please do. Space art in the galaxy. In a small bright office working side by side. Let's see. Uh, Robert Hurt and Tim Pyle bring the universe to life. What we're doing does have real science underlying it. Robert is an astrophysicist turned artist. Tim, once a Hollywood animator, is now a planet illustrator. Together they produce some of NASA's most popular images, from renderings of how planets light years away could look, to actual photos of stars and galaxies captured by NASA's powerful telescopes. And this is sort of how it comes to me. And then I Many of those yeah. images have a dark grainy start, but color and light reveal an astonishing glimpse of how the deep regions of space might appear to the human eye. What I'm trying to do is show people sort of the, the broader colors that the universe has to offer. It's a delicate blend of imagination and data. The artists meet with NASA scientists over many drafts to ensure a planet or galaxy's look lines up with the research to make each one as accurate as possible. I love the challenge. It's kind of like a puzzle to me of trying to create something that looks really cool within the restrictions that were given by the scientists. It can take days, even weeks, to produce just a single image. The dazzling final results, enough to keep us all dreaming of the final frontier for years to come. Blue Marble 2.0. NASA's Rob Simmon made this. And it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. The, to us, the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, it has to be. I'm just going to show a clip of the Felix Baumgarten jump. And I just want to bring this to everybody's attention real quick. I've addressed the curve of the earth in many other videos. Okay, so the hatch opens. He's looking straight out at the horizon. And this is what he truly sees. Okay, there's the horizon straight across as you can see. Okay, now we're going to watch here just a second. And now we see this. Um, this, what we're seeing right here, is just a small section of New Mexico. Um, so I've heard people say, well, this is the curve of the Earth. Well, if you think that's the curve of the Earth, then, you know, you'd have to think that New Mexico took up two-thirds of, of the world or something. 
Uh, I'm not trying to make fun, and I'm certainly not taking anything away from what this gentleman has achieved. It's great. I admire him for it. But I'm just trying to educate people that this is not the curve of the earth. This is not what he is seeing. This is just the fish eye lens effect. And uh, like I said, he's... Where's your passion? Where's your there. That's what he sees. That camera is looking straight out. The uh, horizon rises straight up to meet at the camera's eye level. Planetary.org is getting in on the action. <laughs> They're doing worse yet. Uh, this is uh, a video, and I've just paused it here. And, uh, you know, look at this, this shape of the world here. What is going on? I mean, this is beyond ridiculous. The problem is that people base their decisions on emotion. Nobody thinks about things logically. Everybody always says it's better to be stung by the truth than comforted by a lie, but so very few people actually mean that. And just as a side note, they're talking about this uh, light cell being powered by photons. I do have a video coming up where I talk about what photons really are, and I'm sorry to take so long with it. I want it to be right. I want it to be to where people could understand and do their own investigating. But, I mean, what what is this here? Is this supposed to be the West Coast? So I think that was supposed to be this little spot right here, if you look at it. <laughs> um, it's just, just insane. That's crazy. I mean, it, these continents keep getting bigger and bigger all the time. 